this your boy rj back with another video for you guys and this is a special video because i i know i made this video back in 2k20 and this was in reference to my 3-2 zone defense and i want to talk to you guys about defense this year i want to talk to you guys about running the 3-2 zone this year how you can run the 3-2 zone when you should run a 3-2 zone and sometimes when you should not run the 3-2 zone now i'm going to explain before we get into it hit the like button subscribe you need to you know we rocking man click the link in the description for the twitch follow your boy on twitch when we go live we get lit and turn those bells on on youtube so when we drop them videos y'all can spam up them like comments all that fire stuff and share it out as well to your mama your sister your brother your uncle your, you know the whole family your friends you feel me just go do that but we're gonna go ahead and get into it so this is a unlimited game um that i played in out the gate i played an unlimited game so now I'm not playing right now. I just recorded some gameplay. I'm going to use my mouse to kind of like pause it a little bit. So just bear with me. I'm going to be like pausing it, you know, showing you guys why I did that. Possibly rewind, fast forward, all that good stuff. So just based upon the team right here, I look at the team and I'm like, hmm, yes, J Kid, Allen Houston, Sean Elliott, ba Bailey Howell, Bob Lanier. He only has three shooters because Jason Kidd is not going to shoot like that. So his, his main focus is going to be those wings in the corners with those three players. So already right there three two zone could work if he's hitting shots consistently but you're gonna see what i like to do on um, with running my three two zone so we're gonna go through the steps of the defense I always run my defense the same if you guys want me to do a slower video to talk more about why i do my defense this way i can slow it down talk about it and i'll drop a video on that as well so right now i'm just going pretty fast like i just went ahead and did it because like i said I, I was not recording this video uh, with playing this game i just recorded the gameplay and i want to talk over it a bit um but yeah man like that's this year zone defense and defense in general is way different than last year the reason why i said that is because of latency um the game moves slow it doesn't move quick smooth fast i'm not saying i'm not gonna say it doesn't move smooth it doesn't move responsive you get what i'm saying like this game feels like it's you know step back like it's slow down bro like you move the stick one way he'll go like it's not as responsive as 2k20 is sometimes and i don't know if that's because of they're focused on next gen is what they say or you know this is just how the game is and this is how the game is it's tough because i like the responsiveness um this year is not that responsive so um yeah, and that's the biggest thing for me is I like a responsive gameplay and it's kind of hard to run the zone with, not, with, with it not being responsive. And I'm going to explain how you can like get around being responsive with your players. Um, but the biggest thing for me is letting go of the turbo button. So you see, I went to three, two zone, four corners tight, physical, and then we're going to crash the board. So out the gate, he's spacing the floor out. He has Allen Houston in the left corner. He's going to kick it back to Allen right here. He's going to shoot that three. He was open. So the biggest thing is you can see when your players kind of like turn around, you know, it, they're not going to recover on that. So that was a good shot out the gate. He ran around my players, got Allen Houston open and cashed out. But my thing is you're going to, you're going to see a lot of what I do. Like this game was kind of delayed for me too as well. But, um, you know, I instantly go to a three, two zone after each rebound, I always click three, two zone, because if you don't, they'll end up, they'll end up going to man and, and trying to help defense and all that. So every time the rebound is, is, Every time they get the rebound, call a 3-2 zone. So, like I said, you're going to see some possessions where you're going to see a couple steals. Like, I'm right now playing kind of rusty out the gate. So, I call 3-2 zone instantly. Now, we get back. I got Bob Cousy on the right corner. He's going to go to Bob Lanier. We're going to try to drop back. He's going to try to look for top of the key here. Get Sean Elliott to back to Allen Houston. We're going to be recovering on that. So, you see how we are right there because of the 3-2 zone? If we were in the zone, he was going to get that shot off because Bob Cousy was right there. So, we're going to go around here with GP. Easy bucket in the paint out the gate quick go to three two zone Pre protect the perimeter is what i always like to do especially when you got shooters on the court so just looking at his gameplay he's running to the rim looking for the corners so out the gate kicking the bobble near pro hopping we here we here we're, we're pinching that paint man we're pinching that paint we want him to get his shooters his looks and you see like, like look at that bro i'm not gonna miss that bro like that's how delayed the game was three two zone back into it going to the right corner look he looked for the left corner 
re recovering on that. He's going to get that shot to go. The recovery speed on this game is not his best right now. He, it's like it's like I can see it before it happens. By the time you get over there, the shot's already up. So he had that one. That was a good pass. Can't be mad about that. If I see people consistently hit me with those moves and hit those shots, I instantly get out of zone, go man, and call it a day, bro. Like I said, we got a couple, we got a lot of good possessions later down the line with this zone. So you're gonna start seeing how we how we work it. But as you can see, we're like pinching that right there because he's not supposed to be dribbling the ball. So we're gonna pinch that and we're gonna you see how let's go back, let's go back, let's go back a little bit. Let me show y'all a little bit right here. So you see, I got GP and Bob Cousy. I'm literally pinching. Let me slow this down a little bit. Let me see. Yeah. I'm literally, I'm literally pinching. As I as you can see, Clay Thompson is actually about to help as well. So what I like to do is I'll switch to Bob Cousy to cut him off on that left side, right? So as I'm switching Bob Cousy to cut him off on that left side, I switch back to Clay Thompson because just in case he decides to try to hit Allen Houston. I can, I can recover to try to get that steal because he's not thinking about Jason Kidd and he's not thinking about Bob Lanier. His main focus is, you see how I like kind of baited it? I dropped back from Allen Houston to make him look open. And I'm going to send Klay Thompson. I don't know why Klay Thompson went so far back, but I'm going to kind of like move back to Gary Payton to get the bump steal. But Klay Thompson is going to recover back up to the top. You see how I reached with Klay Thompson before I had moved from him? That's what I like to do, bro, because at the same time, the recovery time is kind of slow on here to the point where you got to be careful with the passes. got to be careful with reaching. So the best thing I, I like to say when running 3-2 zone or running any zone period, do not hold turbo the whole time. Do not hold turbo. Just move the players, man. Just move your players to the position. Like you see how I move Paul Pierce. I reached. I overreached. He's probably going to he missed that one. But if you want to reach, you messed up. You want to make sure it's right on time and right on the money. So do not hold turbo and keep switching your players. Just move your players. Move, move the players to the icons. Just move them to the certain positions to try to get that pass, to try to get in that passing lane. Do not hold turbo trying to spam turbo because you will mess yourself up. You will slow your players down. And it, it just does, it feels weird now. Like it's not as responsive as 2K20 where you can just hold turbo switch and they're moving quick. No, it's not like that this year. So I think we got a good possession right here too as well. See how he got Warby free in. I'm moving Bob Cousy. So I'm just moving them. Just move the players. Just move the players. Bring it. That's a good contest. But he knocks that down right there. So, you know, I, I kind of brought Clay Thompson up a little bit too high. He dropped the pass up there to Sean Elliott. Sean Elliott knocked that down, which is pretty, which is pretty a, a good pass. You know, I can't be mad about that. But he, see how he's playing off ball defense with the center. Normally I shoot that shot, but it wouldn't let me shoot. So we got to get something better off and kick it back to Bob Cousy. We're gonna go ahead and green this one up. That's cash. I can explain my offense as well if you guys want videos on my offense. This is mainly about defense, though. And, like, usually I do extended pressure on the point guard. Pretty much, I'll switch over to Klay Thompson, make them look like they're open. See how I'm just moving the players? Just move the players. Kicking in the paint, he's going to get that bucket to go. That 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 was just a bailout bucket, bro. Like, those buckets is just bailout buckets. You just throw it in the paint, get it to go, and you can't really do much about that. So... We're going to kick it back to Paul Pierce. I'm going to shoot this three. Yeah, that's delayed. That's bad. Yeah, You see what I'm saying? Like this game was already out the gate feeling delayed and sluggish. So it's, it's kind of hard with movement within this game because it's not as responsive. So we're going to go ahead and cut off uh, Rip Hamilton right here. You see how I'm reaching with Gary Payton to get in the passing lane? I'm moving Clay. I'm just moving the players. Look how I'm just moving these players. Just moving the players. Not holding turbo. Just moving the players. This is good defense right there. Good rebound right here. And we're going up the court with it, kicking the, you know, going up the court, kick the Clay Thompson. Nah, I thought I was gonna kick the Clay Thompson. I slowed it down. All right, okay. So I slowed it down, going straight to the rack, kicking it to Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce with the post up spin move right here. Let me get that dunk. Oh yeah, I remember that play. You gotta be careful. That's the biggest thing within gameplay. I'm gonna make a video on as as far as in like why do people lose in unlimited too? Because the biggest thing about unlimited is slowing down. You see how I brought Ben Wallace over there to contest, but he still hit that. That's some 2K BS right there. This is what I'm talking about sometimes. Like that was a perfect contest where I brought Ben Ben Wallace over there to contest. I jumped too early, but he still was able to get it off with no contest. So, you know, it's a lot of things about this game to where I can say, does the 3-2 zone work? Is the 3-2 zone the best defense to run? Not really in this game as of right now because of how non-responsive it is. You can get a couple possessions off of it. I will definitely say this. Do not spam 3-2 zone. When I say that, just don't sit in it. Because if you play against somebody that will figure it out, it'll be easy money. Don't sit in a 3-2 zone. If you have the ability to switch, do you see how right there? Now, let's go back. Let's take a look at that right there. So, out the gate, he brought the ball with World B Free, right? 
So he bought the ball, will be free. He's going straight to the rack. You see how I'm already just keeping Klay Thompson in that position because he's only looking at one side, that pop with Rip Hamilton. But Klay Thompson's there to recover. So we're there, right? Now you see how I switch back to Gary Payton. Now, the, the biggest thing about this is I'm keeping Gary Payton in position because he has two options, right? He can either throw it to his small forward because I believe Richard Hamilton is his shooting guard. His small four is literally behind where will be free. But I have Gary Payton in a position where he can intercept that regardless of what pass it may be. So you see I'm right in the middle between where will be free and the small forward. But I'm there for that pass and land to get that steal. Because <clears throat> GP is right there. And you get that. You know what I'm saying? In those passing lanes. And now we're up the court. So I'm kind of like, I normally like to keep my point guard in a position uh, to be able to jump the pass for the small forward on the other side of the wing or in front of the point guard. Because in, just in case you want to retrieve it and get back, get back to the point guard to try to reset things up, you have those two options where you can get in those passing lanes. Perfect players like that could be Gary Payton because interceptor, Isaiah Thomas for interceptor. You got players like Ben uh, Ben Simmons. Um, when they drop a point guard, Ben Simmons for sure. Magic Johnson for sure. Your taller guards would be the best ones up there too as well because you know those those long outlet passes to the wings they can be able to stretch and get those so, so that's the easier way to have your point guard being able to set and be right there so we're kicking into the third quarter right here we're back on the zone defense right so you see how he's trying to look for certain players i'm bringing bob Cousy. we're gonna get that bump steal right there we're up the court he was looking to kick it to sean elliott but we got that bump steal quick as possible so that's the biggest thing is moving your players to the position to try to get the bump steal don't reach too much you don't want to reach too much because the fact that you reach you can kind of mess yourself up now you see i'm bringing paul pierce up here to do a one three one kicking clay thompson to the wing getting that contest as we get that to go now as you can see how i did that there i kind of brought paul pierce to go up to the top of the key to play a one three one so that way clay can drop down to the wing makes it easier to move you know it's making them to like think like all right i gotta move this way i gotta move that way so i'm gonna bring clay thompson up make rip look like he's open now he's gonna kick it down that's a good pass right here to scola so now he's working the paint that was a good rotation kind of move paul pierce too fast kick to scola he got the nice little close range jumper right there the biggest thing for me is just keep them, keeping the same momentum not holding turbo so much i'm gonna green this one right here keeping the same momentum not holding turbo so much being able to read and react and that's the best that's the biggest thing i say if my players especially you can the best time to run three two zone two if your players just rim run players if they're just going to the rim trying to get the ball off the court throw, throw three two on them because their first minds they're not thinking about shooting they're thinking about running to the rim so out the gate bro they're kind of confused now you see how many bump stairs we're getting because he's trying to dribble through all this so we're gonna kick out the bob Cousy. we're gonna shoot this one up that's a green bean like money team right there that's cash cash he's gonna call a timeout on the play but like I said before, the best thing to run is when you see players just want to straight out the gate, run to the rim, dunk the ball in the rim. This 3-2 zone could work because of the fact that they're not thinking. Now, if you play against people that are going to slow down, 3-2 zone may not be it because you got people that's going to think in a 3-2 zone. They're going to be like, all right, he's running 3-2 zone. Let me try to see what I can get. Let me slow it down. Let me add his play. Some players are just rim run players. So where they don't think, they just try to rim run and throw up a shot. You can't do that against players like me. Like, I'm not going to allow that. So we're going to come out this timeout. We got Paul George in the game, which is a good wing defender, as well as in Middleton. And we got Dennis Johnson at the top of the key. So we're going to get that steal right here. You see how we got right in that lane? Look up to Howell now. He's not looking for the wings anymore because, he, you know, he sees we are there. So he's going to look for the inside. We're just going to work that through there. So he's going to go ahead and reach the foul right here. And this dude is playing all ball to the max, man. He's playing off ball to the max. So we're going to split space out the floor and watch his call a five out. Look how, look how much off ball he's doing. You got Rip sitting in the paint because he's taking my rim run. That's an easy cash. <laughs> Call that a bucket, bro. Like, you don't, you're, you can't do that against me, dog. Like, people have to realize off ball, you can do it, but don't do it to the max. You feel me? So we're going to keep Paul. Do you see I'm like reaching right there? Moving ben, ben Simmons over there. Dropping back. Going back to the left wing with Middleton with the reach. Going back. Look at the rotations. Look at the rotations. Move, move, move in, Paul. Do you see the bait? Hold on. Let's pause. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's look at that one more time. Just look at the movements. I just want you guys to see those movements, right? So, I'm going to slow everything right here. So, as I just reach with Paul George, try to make it tough for Jason Kidd to dribble. He literally has Allen Houston open. Now, could he have passed that ball to Allen Houston? No. He still couldn't have. Because look at this rotation right here. He sees that he's open. But you see, I got Ben Simmons moving all the way from Howell to the right wing, right? Right corner. And we're there, right? We're there for that contest. So, once I get here... This comes down to a 2-3 because you see how Middleton drops down on Howell, right? So now we're in a 2-3. So what I like to do is I like to go back to Paul George, 
to try to bring him in to contest, but also as well as in watch Jason Kidd because now he has Howell. So I'll go back to Embiid to get Embiid out the paint, but back to Middleton as well because you see Middleton, he's I'm seeing Howell. So I'm sitting on Howell, but that wing is open as well. So soon as I touch middle, as soon as I touch Howell, I'm dropping back to the wing instantly. We drop back to the wing instantly. He pressed A because he meant to, he wanted to pass to the left wing. So he pressed A instead of using icon, which gave the ball to Bob Lanier because he definitely didn't want that pass. So he gets the ball, Bob Lanier. Now he's going to go to the wing. So now I got Middleton coming up now because he sees it. And I'm there trying to reach for that steal. We didn't get it. That was a good reach though. But I'm going back to Embiid because of the fact that Embiid is still in the middle. And I'm going to go over to Howell. Now you see these rotations. I'm going over to Howell because I see him. So now we're here on Howell. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to ben, ben Simmons, get Ben Simmons out the paint because Ben Simmons, I don't want no three seconds in the key. Just do a little circle spin in the paint. You know what I'm saying? Just to look out for the contest because he did have a rim lane, but he decides to pass, kick it out, back out to Rip Hamilton. Low key, that should have been a steal by Middleton, but you know, 2K didn't want to get that to me, but I ended up reaching with Ben Simmons. But now you can see I rotate back with Paul George because he's just passing now, bro. Like he's confused. Sean Elliott at the top of the key for the three. He's spamming A, right? He's literally uh, Allen Houston. My bad, Allen Houston. So then now, right here, this is what I and this is what I mean by just move your players. We get in that passing lane. The ball hits me. The ball's gonna hit me. Boom. Ball hits me. We get to steal. We up the court right here. So this is what I mean about the rotations, being able to move your players, understand why, where to move your players. We're going to hit that shot right there. And I think a few more plays, he decides to quit after this, man. Because, you know, um, like just talking to you about this defense was it was good for me to, to, to explain to you guys. Because like I stated before, man, like it's not always best to run a zone within 2K21. But no one went to run zone in 2K21. Um, that's something that you definitely have to look out for. Like I said, you can get a good couple of possessions from it, but you have to maximize from those possessions. Like the biggest thing for me is if we're going to run zone and I'm playing against somebody that's not understanding it, I'm going to continue to run it. But if I'm playing against somebody that knows the zone and know how to break it down and shoot consistently and hitting their shots. Oh, let's look at that rotation before we. Yeah, yeah, because he's going to quit after this one. We're definitely going to look at that rotation right here. So look at this, right? So he's coming up the court right here. Now he's going to go. You see how I brought Middleton to try to get that bump steal. Now look what I just did right here. So he literally goes left with Allen Houston to leave Rip Hamilton open, right? So Rip Hamilton is open, dead open in the air. Now, as you can see, I'm not worried about Jay Kidd over there. I literally instantly switched over to Paul George and I'm dragging Paul George all the way to the top of the key because he wants that three. Once he goes down, you see how Dennis is just right there, just stuck. No, that's okay. Cause I got Paul George coming all the way to the top of the key, getting in that passing lane, picking off that steal right there. And we up the court, man. Two points. Two points. We're up the court. That's a big dunk. He's going to quit the game. I'm glad you guys have watched this video. Hopefully you learned from this video of when to learn to run the zone, how to run the zone, how to work rotations. Hopefully this can help you out with running the 3-2 zone as well. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Do you run zone? How is your zone? Or are you going to adapt to try to run this zone as well? This is your boy RJ signing out. Another video for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy. The like, subscribe. And notify as always, share it up. Let's get it.